Hey there, it's time for the weekly video. This one just gonna be a basic update. As you know, I've been stranded for the last week now in place. That's gonna change real quick. I got all the parts are uh, coming in to make the repair. Pick up my third member over at Paul's shop next Wednesday. So she should be rolling a week from now, for sure. Anyway, so it's been an interesting week of living the life of someone certainly not homeless because I'm not in a tent being moved along or crashing on a step of a business or anything at night. But I am having the daily challenge of you gotta hike and walk and bus to get water, to get groceries, to get whatever it is you need. And boy, that is a different life. Although I'll tell you, it's been good for my bod to get the exercise, so try to keep up on the walking for sure hmm but it's been a real uh, interesting journey that is an absolute truth <laughs> and so many people have offered to help and I've had one of my patrons has basically covered the big repair I gotta make I mean the blessings are phenomenal and I just uh, can't get over that it's really really something how if you're doing what you're supposed to do, at least in my experience, the way it presents itself, even when you hit a big challenge, it's like, oh shit, I, I, what am I gonna do? Well, you breathe, relax, and you look at your options, and you figure it out. You're gonna figure it out. That's what we have to do, you know? But I'll tell you what, it has given me a renewed understanding for why it is folks who are living on the street and homeless try to camp out and build their places even though I know they're gonna get moved along right next to services right in downtown cores and stuff it's it's a pain in the ass uh, to have to go distance to get the things you need so it's kind of reminded me that that's a big part of why they do that because I know a lot of us are like well why don't they just Go build out in the bushes, the puckers, outside of town. Somewhere where nobody will be upset about them being there. You know, aside from the majority of them having, you know, mental issues to deal with. And, you know, addiction issues. You know, obviously that's a huge factor. But on the others, it's like, logistically, such a big deal to walk and gather everything you need to live every day. I mean, imagine if you don't have a bathroom, you don't have a place, you can't even lock up your stuff. Like with me, I can lock up my rig and walk away. I don't worry about somebody getting into my stuff, you know, so I can be a mile away from resources. That's no big deal. Not the case if everything you got is in a tent, somebody could be watching till you leave and take it. So it's like such a different world when you're really on the street and homeless. And uh, this week or two weeks of being on foot is uh, definitely giving me a renewed reminder of a little bit, just a little bit logistically what their lives are like. So I just wanted to share that experience with you, you know. I know uh, most people don't live a life like this and so it can be hard to relate and uh, gosh, there's lives, you know, obviously I have a hard time relating to because of how I live. So. Anyway, I guess it was just something I felt I should share. I'm uh, happy to be stranded in Ballard. It couldn't have been a better place. It's like a second home for me. And uh, it, it's funny. It reminds me of a story, though, and I'll tell you this, and then we'll be done. Um, when I was in La Paz, you know, Baja, California, Sur, all the way southern end of the peninsula of Baja, that two winters ago, I was... Um, Parked on the Malecon in La Paz for several days waiting for Escape Our El Abaja, which was a big van life overland gathering at uh, El Tecolote, Playa El Tecolote. And there are lots of tourists that come through La Paz off of cruise ships. They bus them there from Cabo San Lucas. And one of these days I was hanging with the truck on the Malecon, which is the big walk, you know, walkway right on the beautiful shore there in La Paz. And this couple walks up and a gentleman's got a quizzical look on his face and he walks up to me and he says, there is a truck just like this that runs around where I live in Seattle. 
And I'm like, I couldn't help myself. I'm like, you're kidding me. Really? And he says, yeah, yeah, I live in Ballard. It's a neighborhood in Seattle. And I said, wow, that's amazing. I said, I've just acted amazed. And he's still looking at it, so puzzled because he knows that's a truck. And his wife's looking on like, what's going on? And I finally say, dude, it's me. Yeah, it's the same truck. He's like, no way. You drove it all the way down here. And I was like, yeah, man. Gave him a sticker. He was so thrilled. It was quite a unique thing to have someone from Ballard who's seen the truck run around this neighborhood show up in La Paz and there it is parked, you know, a couple thousand miles south. <laughs> really fun. That's one of the really fun things about driving something so unique is even people who aren't car people, they recognize it. So anyway, that's my big update for the day. I hope you all have a good weekend coming up and uh, yeah, I'll just keep hoofing it around and uh, doing what I got to do. Take good care of yourselves.